E-Meth, Love Meth, with Teacher Ella. Good day to all motivated grade 10 students. Welcome to my channel. I am Teacher Ella, your most enthusiastic body for this noteworthy and magnificent e-learning experience. Join me in this first episode where we will talk about arithmetic sequence. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to illustrate arithmetic sequence, that mean the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, find the arithmetic means, that mean the sum of the first n terms of the given arithmetic sequence, and solve problems involving arithmetic sequences. Before I proceed to arithmetic sequence, it is important to know what a sequence is. Sequence is also known as progression. It is a set of numbers written in succession. Each number in the sequence is called a term. Say for instance, in the sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on, 4 here is called the first term, represented by a sub 1. 7 is the second term, or a sub 2. 10 is the third term, or a sub 3. And finally, 13 is the fourth term, or a sub 4. The three dots after 13 is called ellipsis, which means the sequence continues infinitely with the same pattern. There are several kinds of sequences that soon I will be discussing in this channel. One of these is arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first differs from the preceding term by a constant called the common difference represented by letter D. Going back to the sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on, let us compute the common difference. To get the common difference, just simply subtract any term of the sequence by its previous term, such that d is equal to a sub 2 minus a sub 1. Take note, do not interchange these values. The subtrahend should always be the previous term of the minuend. This is equal to 7 minus Ten minus seven. Therefore, d is equal to three. Lastly, get the difference between ten and thirteen. D is equal to a sub four minus a sub three, which is equal to thirteen minus ten. So d is also equal to three. With this, we find out that all their differences are common or equal. This means that this sequence is an arithmetic sequence. Now, let us check whether the second example is arithmetic or not. Check if it has common difference. Get the difference between the second term and the first term. So, 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. From here, we already find out that it doesn't have common difference, and so we say that this sequence is not an arithmetic sequence. Now that you can already distinguish an arithmetic sequence through its common difference, then you can now easily find the next few terms. Going back to the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on, what is the fifth term? Very good! The fifth term is 16. Just simply add the common difference to the fourth term. So, 13 plus 3 is equal to 16. So, what is the next two terms of this sequence? You are right! The next two terms are 19 and 22. But what if I will say find the 100th term of the sequence? Well, 
you can continue the process of adding the common difference until you reach the 100th term, but that will be a long process and time-consuming. So, let's make this easy and simple by using a formula. If a sub 1 and d are known, it is easy to find any term in the arithmetic sequence by using this rule. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. And where did we get this formula? Well, let's derive it. An arithmetic sequence forms like this, where a sub n is equal to the nth term, and the subscript n refers to the number of terms. Let us express each term to a sub 1 and common difference d. The first term a sub 1 is equal to a sub 1 plus 0 d. 0 here denotes that in the first term no common difference is added yet. For the second term, we get a sub 2 by adding a common difference to a sub 1. Thus, it is equal to a sub 1 plus 1 times d. Then, we find the third term a sub 3 by adding another d to a sub 2. So, a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus d plus d. That means, a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus 2d. Similarly, we get a sub 4 by adding another d to a sub 3. So, a sub 4 is equal to a sub 1 plus 3d. And from this, observe that there is a relationship between the coefficient of d to the number of terms. It is always 1 less than the number of terms or n minus 1. That means a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. And that was how we derived the formula of arithmetic sequence. So, if you forget the formula, then derive it. Now, let's apply the formula in this example. What is the 14th term of the arithmetic sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on? You are asked to find a sub 14. Analyze what are given. From the sequence, you know that a sub 1 is equal to 5. And since we are looking for the 14th term, then n is equal to 14. And obviously, d is equal to 2. Then use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d to find a sub 14. Substitute the given values, so a sub 14 is equal to 5 plus quantity 14 minus 1 times 2. Then simplify using PEMDAS rule. That means, simplify first what is inside the parentheses. So, a sub 14 equals 5 plus 13 times 2. Then, multiply 13 and 2 before adding to 5. So, a sub 14 is equal to 5 plus 26, which is equal to 31. Therefore, the 14th term is 31. Let us have this second example. In the arithmetic sequence, negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, and so on, what term is 44? You are asked to find the number of terms where 44 is located in the sequence. Then, n here is the unknown variable. The given values are a sub 1 is equal to negative 7. We know that 44 is part of the arithmetic sequence, but we don't know yet in what term it is placed. So, let's denote a sub n is equal to 44. Let's compute the common difference. d is equal to negative 4 minus negative 7. Remember the rule of subtraction to change the sign of the subtrahend and proceed to addition or keep change change. Thus, d is equal to positive 3. The same goes to the other pairs of terms. Thus, the common difference is equal to 3. Substitute the given values to the formula. So, 
4 to 4 is equal to negative 7 plus quantity n minus 1 times 3. Multiply the binomial n minus 1 to 3. So, 3 times n is equal to 3n. And 3 times negative 1 is equal to negative 3. So, the result is 44 is equal to negative 7 plus 3n minus 3. Then, combine similar terms. Negative 7 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 10. So, 44 is equal to 3n minus 10. Transpose negative 10 to the right side of the equation to be combined with 44. Upon transposing, negative 10 will become positive 10. So, 44 plus 10 is equal to 3n. Thus, 3n is equal to 54. Divide 3 to both sides to get the value of n. So, 3n divided by 3 is equal to 54 divided by 3. Cancel out 3 because 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1 and 54 divided by 3 is 18. So, n is equal to 18. Therefore, 44 is the 18th term of the sequence. There are lots of real-life situations that involve arithmetic sequence. For instance, a university had an enrollment of 8,500 students in the year 2010. Each year, the enrollment increased by 350 students. What was the enrollment in the year 2015? To visualize the problem, let's make this timeline. The year 2010 corresponds to A sub 1. That means the year 2011 is A sub 2 and so on until year 2015 as the 6th term or A sub 6. At first, the population is 8,500, thus A sub 1 is equal to 8,500. Every year, it increases by 350, so that means the common difference is 350. And since we are looking for the population in the year 2015, which is a sub 6, then n is equal to 6. From the formula, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. After substituting the given values, a sub 6 is equal to 8500 plus quantity 6 minus 1 times 350. Simplify, then a sub 6 is equal to 8,500 plus 5 times 350. Multiply 5 and 350. So, A sub 6 is equal to 8,500 plus 1,750. Thus, A sub 6 is equal to 10,250. Therefore, there were 10,250 students who enrolled in the year 2015. What we did is getting the nth term of arithmetic sequence. It's simple, right? All you have to do is to use the formula. Moving on to arithmetic means. Arithmetic means are the terms between two consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. Going back to the arithmetic sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on, 7 is the arithmetic mean of 4 and 10, while 10 is the arithmetic mean of 7 and 13. 7 and 10 are the arithmetic means of 4 and 13. So simple, right? In other words, the middle terms are called the arithmetic means. If A, M, B forms an arithmetic sequence, then M is the arithmetic mean of A and B. Since arithmetic sequence has common difference always, then M minus A is equal to B minus M. Combine similar terms which are M and negative M. Transpose negative M to the left and gather the remaining terms to the right by transposing negative A to the right side of the equation. So, 
m plus m is equal to a plus b, which is equal to 2m equals a plus b. Find the value of m by dividing both sides by 2. So, 2m divided by 2 is equal to a plus b divided by 2. Then, cancel 2. Thus, m is equal to a plus b divided by 2. Say for instance, what is the arithmetic mean between 20 and 28? The given values are A is equal to 20, B is equal to 28, and M, which is the arithmetic mean, is unknown. So, M is equal to A plus B divided by 2. Substitute the given M is equal to 20 plus 28 divided by 2. Simplify then m is equal to 48 divided by 2. So, m is equal to 24. Therefore, the arithmetic mean between 20 and 28 is 24. What if we are looking for more than one arithmetic means? What shall we do? Take a look at this example. Insert 4 arithmetic means between 5 and 25. To visualize, let's do this. 5 is your first term, and after inserting 4 terms such as a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5, then 25 is the 6th term. Thus, the given values are a sub 1 is equal to 5, a sub 6 equals 25, and n equals 6. What we are looking for is simply d or common difference so that we can use this value as addend to the first term to get the next four terms. Using the formula, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times t. Substitute the given values, so a sub 6 is equal to 5 plus quantity 6 minus 1 times t. Our a sub 6 equals 25, so 25 equals 5 plus 5d. Then, collect similar terms. Transpose negative 5 to the left. So, 25 minus 5 equals 5d. Thus, 5d equals 20. Get the value of d by dividing 5 to both sides. So, 5d divided by 5 equals 20 divided by 5. Thus, d is equal to 4. Use this value to get the second, third, fourth, and fifth term of the sequence. Since d equals 4, so a sub 2 equals 5 plus 4 equals 9. a sub 3 equals 9 plus 4 equals 13. a sub 4 equals 13 plus 4 equals 17 and a sub 5 equals 17 plus 4 equals 21. Let's check if the 6th term is 25 by adding 4 to the 5th term. So, a sub 6 equals 21 plus 4 equals 25. Therefore, the arithmetic means between 5 and 25 are 9, 13, 17, and 21. Great! You just succeeded how to determine the arithmetic means of arithmetic sequence. Now, fasten your seatbelts as we move on to arithmetic series. Arithmetic series is the sum of the first n terms of arithmetic sequence. This is denoted by S sub n. Such that if you are finding the sum of the first 100 counting numbers, then you are looking for S sub 100. Did you know that a certain schoolboy was able to get the sum of the first 100 counting numbers in just a few seconds? Can you also do that? I will give you 10 seconds to figure out the sum. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So, what is the sum? The sum is 5,050. How did this schoolboy get the sum in very less time?
Well, what he did was just figuring out the pattern. From the series, he noticed that when 1 and 100 is added, the sum is 101. Same goes to 2 and 99, to 3 and 98, and so on. So he said that the sum is equal to 50 pairs times 101, which is equal to 5050. That genius schoolboy becomes the father of modern mathematics. He is Carl Frederick Gauss. From what he discovered, we enjoy to use nowadays the formulas in getting the sum of the first n terms of arithmetic sequence. Let's go back to the solution of that schoolboy. He showed that the sum of the first 100 counting numbers is equal to 50 pairs times 101. He got 50 here as the half of the actual number of terms which is 100, half only because terms are paired to each other. Then, 101 is the sum of the given first and last terms which are 1 and 100 respectively. Thus, S sub 100 is equal to 1 half of 100 times quantity 1 plus 100, denoting in variables where n is equal to the number of terms, S sub n is equal to 1 half of n times quantity a sub 1 plus a sub n, or simply, S sub n is equal to n divided by 2 times quantity a sub 1 plus a sub n. Thus, using this formula, we can get the sum of the first n terms given the first and the last terms. Also, take note that from our previous discussion, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. We can substitute this to the first equation. Then, S sub n is equal to n divided by 2 times quantity a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. Simplify by adding the two a sub 1s. So, S sub n is equal to n divided by 2 times quantity 2 times a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. This formula will be used when first term and common difference are given. Now, let's apply those formulas in this sample problem. Find the sum of the first 20 terms of the arithmetic sequence if the first term is 2 and the last term is 50. We are asked to find S sub 20, thus n is equal to 20 a sub 1 equals 2, and a sub n or our a sub 20 equals 50. Since last term is given, we can use the first formula which is s sub n is equal to n divided by 2 times quantity a sub 1 plus a sub n. Substitute the given, so s sub 20 is equal to 20 divided by 2 times quantity 2 plus 50. Then simplify. S sub 20 is equal to 10 times 52. Thus, S sub 20 is equal to 520. Therefore, the sum of the first 20 terms is 520. Try this second problem. Find the sum of the first 10 terms of the arithmetic sequence, negative 4, negative 10, negative 16, and so on. From the problem, what is asked? Correct. The unknown value is S sub 10. So, n equals 10. And from the sequence, obviously, A sub 1 equals negative 4. We can also get the common difference, which is negative 6. This time, what formula is applicable? Good, it is the second formula, which is S sub n is equal to n divided by 2 times quantity 2 times a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times t. Substitute the given. Then, 
S sub 10 is equal to 10 divided by 2 times quantity 2 times negative 4 plus quantity 10 minus 1 times negative 6. Simplify first what is inside the bracket. So, S sub 10 is equal to 5 times quantity negative 8 plus 9 times negative 6. 9 times negative 6 is negative 54. So, S sub 10 is equal to 5 times quantity negative 8 plus negative 54. Thus, S sub 10 is equal to 5 times negative 62, which is equal to negative 310. Therefore, the sum of the first 10 terms is negative 310. Do you understand now how to compute the arithmetic series? Very well. Then, let's solve this problem. A pile of wood has 15 logs in the bottom row, 13 logs in the next bottom row, and so on, with two less logs in each row until the top row which consists of one log. How many logs are there in the pile? We are looking for the sum of logs in the pile. Let us analyze the problem. The total number of logs will be the sum of this series. Since there are 15 logs in the first row, thus a sub 1 equals 15. In the second row, there are 13 logs, and each row consists of two less logs than the bottom row, so our common difference is negative 2 because 13 minus 15 equals negative 2. Our last term or a sub n equals 1, but we don't know yet the position of 1 or in what term is 1 placed, so n is also unknown. To solve this, we need to find first the value of n by using the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. Substitute the given values, so 1 equals 15 plus quantity n minus 1 times negative 2. Multiply these first, so 1 equals 15 plus negative 2n plus 2. Then combine similar terms, thus 1 equals 17 minus 2n. Transpose 17 to the left side and leave negative 2n at the right side of the equation. 1 minus 17 equals negative 2n or negative 16 equals negative 2n. Divide the whole equation by negative 2 to get the value of n. So, negative 16 divided by negative 2 equals negative 2n divided by negative 2. Thus, n equals 8. That means 1 is in the 8th row of the pile. Then, we will add the logs from the first row up to the 8th row by getting the value of s sub 8. Use the formula S sub n equals n divided by 2 times quantity A sub 1 plus A sub n. Substitute the given, so S sub 8 equals 8 divided by 2 times quantity 15 plus 1. Thus, S sub 8 equals 4 times 16, which is equal to 64. Therefore, there are 64 logs in all in the pile of woods. And that's it! Congratulations! You succeeded to learn the topics about arithmetic sequence, including the arithmetic means, the arithmetic series, and of course, the problems involving them. Great job! You did them all! See you in the next episodes! Don't forget to like and subscribe to be updated to our next lessons. This has been your math enthusiastic body, Teacher Ella. Only here, where all problems have solutions. E-Math. Love math with Teacher Ella.